Well, here we go again, making sketchy things with LEGO that we probably shouldn't. For today's episode, I wanted to see if I could push the envelope on my experiments with LEGO pneumatic powered guns. But unlike other LEGO pneumatic shooters I've seen, this one relies on a more explosive method of pushing air. So, of course, we'll have to see just what destruction we can manage using some different projectiles, different barrels, and even seeing just how fast we can shoot them. First up, I want an onboard compressor this time. This tiny dude, when I pump it, is, um, yeah, pretty pathetic. So, uh, how about four more of him? This should give us a few more bubbles. Connect the compressors together, and let's see. Hmm, yeah, not bad. But we can do better. Let's double up again. Chuck these two compressor units together. Hook up the hosing. Secure them. Now we have an eight cylinder compressor. That should make for a pretty decent bubble machine. And it uh, seems to fill up some small airtight spaces pretty quick. Yeah, I've seen better soap bubbles though. Okay, what pressure can we bring this up to? According to this gauge, we get about 35 psi pretty easily, which is good because my old gun, while compact, was a real pain to pump using this handheld compressor. And having to manually crimp the pipe was both annoying and resulted in inconsistent shots. And a hand cramp. For my new gun here, I'm gonna use the same crimping principle, but make it much more consistent. This crimping method is great for providing the strong burst of air to propel our projectiles. To start with, we're gonna secure some pneumatic hosing like this, and then using this Technic L piece to both crimp the pipe and also to punch it open when the mechanism releases. The mechanism is driven by this elastic band. So when the pipe is crimped and then released, it snaps open, punching the pipe open at the same time. Okay, let's close it up and test it out. And then to turn this into a gun, we're gonna need this, a barrel and trigger assembly. This simple trigger will keep the crimper in place. Attach the crimper. And now we can see it all working together. Then we're gonna need to store us some air. We'll mount these two air tanks on either side. And the pressure gauge will tell us what our output will be. Finally, I have no hope of aiming down the sights, so this mount will allow us to attach a green laser dot. And then of course, we'll need a barrel. I've designed this to be easy to swap barrels in and out for different experiments. Each one is simply held in place using an elastic band. <laughs> All right, how's she cooking? Turn her on, and it takes around 20 seconds to get up to around 30 PSI. Pull the trigger, and the air is explosively released. Well, is it enough? Hmm, yeah, I'd say so. So, how much airflow does it actually produce? Hmm, not much, I don't think. I've no idea how much air is actually stored in a balloon, but this balloon took about 15 minutes to fully pump up. And by fully, I mean... Yeah, fully. Okay, let's run a few tests using the speed thingy to see how fast we're shooting. For these tests, I'm using a Lego axle wrapped in Teflon tape to make it fit the barrel better. When we shoot the run through the speed thingy, we get our speed in feet per second. And uh, speaking of power, I also want to answer the age-old question, is longer better? I'm assuming yes, so let's start with a long barrel at 10 psi. Okay, 10 psi. 10 PSI again. Twenty PSI. Twenty PSI again. Thirty PSI. Thirty PSI. 
pretty consistent. 40 PSI. 40 PSI. Okay, not bad. And the reach of this long barrel is even enough for me to use to cool my tea. Not a drop spilled. Perfect. So, how's Shorty? How does this barrel do? 10 PSI? 10 PSI? Hmm, interesting. 20 PSI? 20 PSI? 30 PSI? 30 PSI? 40 PSI. 40 PSI. Well, hey, what do you know? Maybe longer isn't better. I actually tried every round and the shorter barrel consistently outperformed the longer one for some reason. So what does the 30 PSI get us using the shorter barrel? This is some pretty thick paper. So yeah, not bad. What if we use a few small ball bearings? They don't fit the barrel very well, and they're very inefficient. But they still sort of work. Now the main limitation right now is that these axles just don't fit the barrel well. But what if we use a slightly thinner metal barrel? Now we get a much tighter fit without the need for Teflon. Let's swap out the plastic barrel for this metal one. And see what speed we get. <laughs> hey, 60 FPS, not bad. And how does this one fare at a distance? Not bad. Yeah, this one actually packs a bit of a punch. By the way, if you'd like to see more of these LEGO experiments, feel free to like or subscribe. Cheers! But what if we give it a sharper tip? This wooden projectile feels like it shoots even faster. But man, accuracy takes a hit. Oh, uh, come on. It almost looks like it's swerving through the air because of the speed and how light it is. Finally! So, uh, how fast are we actually talking here? Whoa, 80 FPS. That's pretty much double the Teflon coated axles. This dude is fast. Well, for a Lego gun, but terribly inaccurate. This round is actually pretty annoying to use. But you know what else fits the plastic barrel almost perfectly? Knitting needles. The weight and shape of this is a lot more aerodynamic and it feels a lot more accurate as well. Sorry, little dude. Let's give it a slightly bigger target. Well, they're not sticking perfectly, but at least they're landing point first. It feels a lot easier putting things with a spear-like projectile. The weight of it also feels like it's transferring more energy. Now just how fast are these traveling? Oh damn, 54 FPS. At a weight of... 2.85 grams? That's around 0.4 joules of energy, which isn't crazy. But that's about half as powerful as a European airsoft rifle. And this is a Lego gun. So, how's its penetration power? Here's our measuring banana. Let's go for 35 PSI. Hmm, not bad. Of course, it goes through paper like butter. But how about the mighty cracker? These guys are tough. <laughs> Not tough enough, though. What about 
two crackers. Yep, still going through two of them. And three. Yeah, three seems to be the magic number. But at least I can get through a few more Pringles. Well, thanks for watching everyone, and uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>